He dragged a harsh wooden twig along with the metal bars, abashed with the empty and dissatisfied thud of metal on wood. The man with the insidious grin darted towards the thinking man who was victim to him. He crouched low. You will tell me, without a spare detail, my friend. Where are the keys to power? The man opposite him had his eyes darted down as per usual, as if his imprisoned habitation bore no scar on his fantastic reality within. This information cannot be distilled so succinctly. You're talking about years of political history, institutional practice, which Given the sudden shift of time, you have on your hands seems more than manageable to explain. The self-made warden was still squatting, attempting to meet the eyes of the mind-trodden prisoner. Lying on his good side, top half belted with scars designed to defend against the complacency of indenturement. The prisoner kept his eyes down within his thoughts. Doesn't take a lot for you to take on the world. You're a smart man without morals. Why would you need me to tell you how? Because I know you see things like me. You see them for what they are. Those lying and deceitful people in power keep pushing you down. We've learned exactly how they do it. I need to know. I won't be pushed down anymore. Quite a noble cause. There was an uninterrupted silence. The warden contemplated his own confusion at the statement before settling on a reply. Yes, it's about time those bastards learned their lesson. I rid the world of those who wronged us. I'll take their misused power from them. The prisoner looked up at his childhood companion. Friend was always a strong word for this man. To the prisoner, the warden was simply a means to alleviate loneliness in a confusing world of relationship and feeling. The warden met his eyes with glory and eagerness, as if his observations in the prisoner's blank, spherical soul could give him what he desires. This meeting of eyes was only brief before the prisoner, ever considerate of his own cranium, darted his eyes down again. Is somewhat correct in that assessment, I suppose, he deadpanned. About seeing things similarly, anyway. I, but you see, the difference between you and me is that you see a cold, the world a trivial disease of dead strangers. You can't see the people, only the houses and the trees, but the warmth of their presence is something I know. I may not understand it, but I see it in every place there. You always see the cold strangeness. I never could see the cold nor be satisfied with the strangeness. The warden frowned the whole time. And upon noticing a paragraph without the correct answer, furiously grabbed at the convicted man's collar. The creeping reminder that he was alone with this man in an undisclosed location with no life ready to save him hurled itself into the pit of the prisoner's stomach. Though only briefly, before it was clinically dismissed. You are going to die here, mate. Chalk that down as one of your fucking facts. I've known you since you were a kid in our village. You always read those fucking book things. You talk to that human girl who crashed there. You know how the system works. I'm going to rule the entire goddamn empire, and you're going to tell me how. You're right that my end is here. And that I'll tell you what you want to hear, said the prisoner. I love this world. All they ever wanted was to explain it to people like you. And get you as far as the Stellark. I'm afraid I don't know how to describe its wonder to you. Show me the Stellark then. Very well. <laughs>